Because especially, you know, if we go back to the start of when you came into the public conscious on Pop Idol 20 years ago, which is mind blowing that it's that long ago, you obviously had stuff that was rumbling on that you weren't aware was mm. affecting you necessarily. Yeah. Then you get thrust into, you know, we're talking about the conception of that sort of TV. That didn't yeah. exist before Pop Idol no. in the UK. So this is en masse fame, attention, adoration. You you were lumped with everything at once that, that en masse people assume is the good bit. Oh, my mm. God, you've got this, the dream. You're living the dream. But knowing now what you do and, and what you were dealing with from your childhood, how did that impact you, all of that, on literally overnight? It, it honestly, it was a distraction mm. to the main event. And again, because I was a high achiever, I, it was easy. I mean, it really was easy. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll win a competition. Right, now I'll stick around. Yeah, I'll do this. I'll go and do a, a movie with Stephen Frears and Judy Tetch. Easy. I'll go and do a play. You know, I mean, literally, it's like high functioning, high avoiding. Mm. So it, it really wasn't difficult. It was easy. Mm. And actually... It allowed me to avoid stuff. So I'd obsess about work. Uh, but also I was like, I was never felt good enough. You know, oh, if I didn't get on them, oh, you know, looking at other people, constantly comparing myself. Yeah. Constantly looking at other people and thinking, oh, they're better than me. You know, they're better. And so I wasn't really enjoying it either, but wasn't really aware. Yeah. And that's even before social media came into play yeah. that you had those feelings, which is now ubiquitous for most people because we're going, oh, look at them, look up there on their holiday or yeah. whatever. This is before that and you're yeah. just doing that. It was, just <clears> with, <throat> it was very much with people in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't feel part of any of it. And I remember years ago, Robbie Williams came round to my flat and um, and he, it, it very, very kind of him, you know, um, and he knew that I was being, I was a bit bamboozled by all of us. Oh, what the fuck's this? And um, he said, I, I don't think he'd mind me sharing this. And he, he said, his album had just charted number one. And I think it sold like 210,000 or something in the first week. And he was like, I'm really pissed off because Coldplay s sold 220,000 or something like that. You know, and it was so interesting hearing it from him. He was owning it and making light yeah. of it, you know. He was like, and I was like, he's Robbie Williams, you know. Everyone does it. Everyone does it. Yeah. You know, you have to get on top of it because it, you can use it to berate yourself so badly. Like one of the first things that really helped me, and it's a good CBT technique, is the comparing. If I find myself comparing, I'm like, this is literally a dead end road. Yeah. There is no positive to come out of me comparing. There is no positive for me looking at your gorgeous, I don't think it is wallpaper, but lovely, it's like a lovely. Foam wall. It's a foam. Yeah. There's material, there's part. I mean, it's delicious. Mm. And there's no point me beginning to compare that to my, because I'll either go one up and go, <laughs> yeah, I've got I've, a better wall than that. I've got De Gournay wallpaper. <laughs> so I think Fern is losing out there. <laughs> so then I've gone one up and yeah. I feel better than you, but it's coming from a place of low self esteem. Mm -hmm. Or I go one down and it's coming from a place of low, low self esteem. So the comparison game, full stop. Yeah. Peer Melody talks about it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So because what? even if we're using, <clears throat> if I'm using you to push you down to get up, it won't make me feel better. No. So what keeps your self-esteem in check now? What keeps you feeling okay, confident enough to be able to do the work you're doing? I've got a few theories. I've got working theories and I'm constantly thinking about them. I think that connection, so something like this. So I did a gig last night. <laughs> I did a corporate gig. So people don't know, but pop stars do corporate gigs. Yeah. For travel agents of the wider area of Birmingham. Brilliant. And... Um, I asked them all up onto stage. I started a conga where only two people joined me around the room. And I realised after two minutes there were only two people joining me. <laughs> and even the second one was lagging behind, to be honest, because she had a, <laughs> you know, she had a stick. Um, and I didn't get back till... But that, that's a true story, by the way. Um, and, and, uh, and then I went, exited throughout the, through the wrong door and went to the kitchens in the hotel. Um, but I didn't get back till two... I didn't sleep great. You know, I wake up feeling a bit groggy. I'm a bit emotional. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling a bit wobbly. But I know that doing this chat, I'll feel lovely. Yeah. Because I'm talking, I'm sharing in a safe space, open vulnerability. So those kind of things, connection. Yeah. We all need to connect. I mean, Johan Hari talks about it amazingly. And I think he's really right. 
I also think that we, if we feel loved, we feel better. What I've tried to do is through therapy is get that muscle memory of feeling loved. And even as I tune in it, into it now, it's like suddenly I notice, oh, my confidence goes up. Oh, I feel a bit more present. So it's really actually quite simple. It's just very difficult to get there.